Two weeks have passed since the fourth Starship launch, but activities at Starbase continue relentlessly day and night. Prominent among them is the work on Ship 30 when it's being upgraded with new-gen heat tiles, and the construction of the new Starship launch tower. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. This is unbelievable. Since we saw the first heat tiles being removed from Ship 30 on June 11th, SpaceX took just one more day to remove two-thirds of the total 18,000 hexagonal tiles from the ship. This speed is astonishing, as we initially thought that removing thousands of heat shield tiles would be a time-consuming obstacle for SpaceX. But what they are doing has dispelled all doubts and worries from fans like us. But the interesting part is yet to come. As SpaceX completed the tile removal, the white ceramic mats underneath the heat shield became increasingly exposed, followed by the removal of these mats to reveal the stainless steel body with many TPS pins. And it's all thanks to Starship Gazer for providing wonderful footage from Starbase. Go ahead and show your support by subscribing to his YouTube channel. Returning to the heat tile removal process, it's noteworthy that SpaceX seems to be doing all of this simultaneously with teams responsible for different sections of the ship and completing the removal processes concurrently. This might be the key that allows SpaceX's work speed to be so fast and efficient. This process will continue into next week. However, the bigger question is what solution SpaceX will choose for Ship 30. Musk has previously revealed two methods. One is to replace the original heat shield tiles with ones that are twice as durable, and the other is to use ablative material beneath the tiles. What do you think SpaceX will choose? Or will they combine both solutions? Honestly, replacing the tiles with a new type seems more challenging for Ship 30, as it requires new research with new components added to increase the tile's hardness. However, we cannot rule out the possibility that SpaceX has already done this research. On the other hand, adding an ablative coating is also raising some eyebrows. Adding this coating inadvertently increases the rocket's weight significantly. However, behind this anomaly is a careful calculation regarding reusability. Although the ablative heat shields cannot be reused, replacing the burnt tiles still offers an advantage over sacrificing the entire ship due to one tile coming off. This action acts as a defensive barrier, taking safety margins to new heights. The crew appreciates this dual redundancy system that will elevate reliability to another level. Despite increasing the payload weight, it turns the ship into one of the safest vehicles in aerospace history, a trade-off well worth accepting. So, these are the current changes to the heat shield, and all of this will tie into the modifications for the heat shield on the new Starship V2 variant that SpaceX is producing. Take a closer look at the new rings of Starship V2, and you might not yet notice any significant changes in the installation of the heat shield. However, there's something exciting I want to highlight. At the end of 2023, some unusual rings appeared at the build site. These rings stood out because of the unique pins used to attach the heat shield tiles. The pins were placed closer together, suggesting SpaceX might be using smaller heat shield tiles. This innovation could enhance the ship's durability and make the tiles less prone to damage. Inspecting further, you'll notice a new layout for the heat shield tiles. This layout rotates the entire heat shield by 60 degrees, positioning most hexagonal tiles on their sides rather than their vertices. This adjustment signifies a strategic enhancement in the design, reflecting SpaceX's relentless pursuit of excellence and innovation. Indeed, since these strange rings appeared, we have not seen any tests conducted on the initial versions of Starship. Therefore, in my opinion, this new design is very likely to be applied to the V2 versions of Starship. Even if it might be a durability test, it could appear in practical use unpredictably. Or, it might be a combined approach, with larger sections of the ship using bigger tiles, while more challenging areas like the edges use smaller tiles. Regardless of its intended purpose, this is still a new advancement for Starship. Let's talk about the exciting progress on the second launch tower. 
Construction of the next orbital launch tower is accelerating rapidly. SpaceX has two final parts along with the chopsticks and the stand on their way from Florida. Once these parts arrive, the only component missing will be the quick disconnect arm. There's still one at Roberts Road where SpaceX manufactures orbital launch pad components. However, this arm might need updating or even be newly built from scratch at the Sanchez site. The teams have made significant strides in preparing the foundation for stacking the tower. The pile cap of the tower is already filled, and SpaceX has begun pouring concrete into it. This process will distribute the tower's enormous weight onto the foundation piles, which SpaceX has driven deep into the ground. The pace and precision of this work reflect SpaceX's commitment to innovation and efficiency, keeping us on the edge of our seats for the next phase of this incredible journey. The crane parts needed for stacking have arrived on site and are already at work. SpaceX is moving faster than initially expected. The first parts of the actual tower, known as the tower legs, are ready to be erected. These leg pieces will form the corners of the tower's lower section, similar to the ones on the existing launch tower 1. The tower legs must be incredibly strong as they are near the engines during launch and bear the tower's entire weight. Once the leg section is completed, we'll witness the rapid stacking of the other tower sections. If everything goes as planned, the new tower will still have nine segments, keeping the height the same. However, I'm hoping for a change here, adding even more excitement to this remarkable project. No matter the changes, SpaceX is certainly gearing up for a larger starship in the long run. The new version, notably V3, could reach up to 150 meters in height and generate 10,000 tons of thrust. A launch tower and pad like the initial ones might not withstand such immense pressure. The orbital launch mount, or OLM for short, will be placed to the south, promising some incredible views when a vehicle is stacked on this new launch pad. This setup might also undergo changes. Will it be the tower legs or the water deluge system? There have been many rumors about SpaceX reducing the number of tower legs to streamline time and costs. Indeed, the Starship launch mount in Florida with six support legs has already been dismantled by SpaceX. This hints at the possibility of a new, more efficient design for future launches. On the other hand, the issue also lies with the water deluge system. Since its installation last year and its debut on Flight 2, the deluge system has proven effective in mitigating the impact of launches or tests on the surrounding infrastructure, ensuring safety. However, after the recent flight, we observed the steel plates turning yellow due to engine heat. Despite its effectiveness, this deluge might not fully meet SpaceX's long-term operational goals in terms of reliability. Recently, on the 14th of June, we saw SpaceX seemingly conduct a small test of the deluge component right in front of Mega Bay 2 at the production site. I am not sure what part they were testing, but it seems SpaceX is testing the spray strength of a subsystem of the water deluge. What do you think about this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel in order to show your support. Thank you. All in all, we are on the clock, waiting for the completion of SpaceX's brand new Starship launch tower. With the infrastructure being rapidly built, the desire to witness its birth has become more urgent than ever. Based on past performance hinting at the future, we can expect the next system to be operational within the next four to five months. Previous projects have shown that SpaceX usually takes about a year to complete key infrastructure, not counting minor updates that follow. With the current launch frequency of every three months, it raises expectations that this new elaborate launch pad will be smoothly initiated by Starship's sixth flight this year. If this indeed is the case, it will be an exciting debut for the second launch tower, showcasing the sophistication of advanced techniques and methods that SpaceX has developed. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.